morning, this everybody. conference will now be recorded. All right. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us this morning. Special board meeting of the West Basin Municipal Water District. This is May 6th. Time now, 10 o'clock. I will now call the meeting to order. And we have determined that we have a quorum. So we'll move on to item three, which is public comment. Mr. General Manager. Uh, I do not have any items for public comment, President uh, Williams. Okay, thank you. Then we'll move on to item four, which is uh, presentations. Any presentations? Uh, likewise, President Williams, I have, we have no presentations today. Okay, then I'll move on to uh, item five, which is the action calendar, and I will turn control to the general manager to move on with the action calendar. Uh, thanks. Uh, thank you, President Williams, and good morning again to uh, members of the board, uh, staff, general counsel. Um, and uh, I don't see Craig on today. So, yes, we have four items on the action calendar today. Uh, all of them are related. Um, the first one is a um, relates to a uh, project over at the Juanita Millinder McDonald Reclamation Plan here in Carson. Uh, where we have uh, a major project that the board voted to move ahead on back on January 14th of this year. Uh, and subsequently, we went out and got bids. Um, and hence the reason for this special board meeting, we're up against a couple of deadlines. Uh, we got the bids, uh, which uh, Kevin will shortly report on. But we're also um, eligible for very, very significant grant funding for this project, actually pay more than half the cost of this project. But uh, the State Water Resources Control Board grant funding and low interest loans, it's uh, $23 million. And that we have to have a contract in place with the contractor to ensure that the State Water Resources Control Board knows that we're in fact moving ahead with this project by June 1 of this year. So we're just, uh, thanks to staff's great work, we've gotten here um, in a record time and this much needed project can move ahead. It also has a, a significant, um, uh, which we'll talk about later, but a uh, significant uh, uh, component with the uh, through our project labor agreement, uh, which aims to boost uh, the local economy and enhance local employment opportunities for disadvantaged and local construction workers. That's all part of it. But as far as this first item here, uh, to consider awarding the bids for the construction portion uh, to the lowest bidder, I'm going to hand it over to our excellent engineer three, Kevin Cullen. Kevin, did I just give you a motion there for three? I think you're a two. <laughs> I think you did. That's okay. <laughs> you can't take it back now. No, it's on, it's on record. All right, Kevin. Well, thank you, Patrick. Uh, good morning again, board members, uh, other West Basin staff. Um, as Patrick mentioned, I'll be providing a recommendation for a construction services agreement award uh, for the Juanita Melender Carson Regional Water Recycling Plant Phase Two Expansion Project. So since early 2000, West Basin has produced more than 28 billion, that's billion with a B, uh, gallons of fit for purpose recycled water um, through the Carson Regional uh, Water Recycling Plant. Um, the main customer for this plant is the Marathon Petroleum Refinery. Uh, they're located about one mile south of, of the facility um, and West Basin serves them two types of uh, recycled water, uh, one for the boiler feed application, um, that is uh, the source water to the the Carson facility is our Title 22 uh, water quality um, from the Edward C. Little facility in El Segundo. Um, so after the, the source water comes into the plant, um, it's treated by microfiltration and reverse osmosis. Um, we provide that to the Marathon refinery um, as a re reverse osmosis water quality for the low pressure boiler feed system. Um, and then we also provide them a nitrified water quality, which is that Title 22 water quality uh, which has been uh, nitrified to remove some of the ammonia um, for applications on some of the, the finer, more sensitive metals in the cooling towers. So the, the project itself, um, the Carson uh, Phase Two Expansion Project and its custom engineered microfiltration system um, stand to increase the supply capacity of the microfiltration process at the plant, um, as well as improve um, the overall system operability and reliability uh, while also taking advantage of some of the um, current funding opportunities that are on the table that Patrick mentioned. 
So we had heard from the State Water Resource Control Board back in December of a, a deadline of June 1st to have an executed construction contract in place uh, to be eligible for the grant funding. Um, in January, um, we met uh, at via special board meeting uh, where the West Basin Board of Directors uh, authorized um, GM and the staff to pr proceed with uh, the project uh, focused on an improvement to the microfiltration system. Um, so following the board meeting, um, staff, um, we, we revis revisited uh, the construction bid documents. We updated all the engineering design drawings um, for this uh, revitalized scope. Um, and we conducted a, a full solicitation for public works construction bids um, and have since received bids. Uh, before diving into the construction solicitation itself, uh, I did want to highlight just uh, a few of the funding opportunities that are on the table. Um, Patrick mentioned uh, West Basin has entered into an installment and sale agreement and grant uh, with the State Water Resource Control Board um, to contribute funding to the project in the amount of $23.8 million roughly. Uh, that's made up of two components, the first being a low interest loan at about $15.7 million. Um, that's 1% per annum over 25 years. Um, and then the second component being a Proposition 1 grant um, for reimbursement of the construction costs um, up to uh, $8,080,000. So um, with that June 1st deadline uh, in mind, uh, staff set out um, right after the board meeting to update the plans and specs. Uh, prepare that new new contract documents and put together the the bid package. So on um, Kevin, uh, Kevin, if you just mentioned too, is, along with the state water resources control board funding, Cal Water is also contributing four million dollars, uh, which is essentially grant funding in addition to that. That's that's the full packet. They're not held to the same deadline, but they're another major uh, grant contributor to the uh, to the project. Sorry, Kevin. That's correct. No, thank you, Patrick. Um, so in addition to the funding opportunities, um, looking at some of the costs moving forward, um, as you can see on, on the screen shared there, uh, we have uh, construction costs. Um, the number displayed there is the recommendation I'm going to provide today or for the construction services award based on the, the bids received. Um, that's in the amount of $20,982,000. Um, construction management services uh, is estimated at, well, We've received a proposal um, that'll be a follow on action item in one of the, the latter agenda items uh, in the amount of $1.231 million. Uh, we also have engineering services during construction, uh, which is a part of the uh, previously approved uh, design engineers contract. Um, Costs looking, looking forward to see, see through the project uh, for engineering services during construction are $499,000. Um, and then we also have labor compliance um, as part of the, the project labor agreement um, estimated at $100,000. That's also a, a contract that's been previously approved by the board, um, as well as uh, materials testing and specialty inspection, uh, also in line with the, the provisions of the project labor agreement, um, which also has a, a follow on item uh, as, as part of this meeting. So for the construction solicitation itself, um, after the board meeting on January 14th, we were able to get that bid package uh, completed and posted um, by May, or excuse me, March 4th. Um, we posted it to uh, West Basin's new e-procurement system, Nego Metrics. Um, the bid package ended up comprising, you know, over 204 uh, engineering drawing sheets and 3,800 pages of, of specifications and contract documents. So very detailed package. Um, the RFB uh, was transmitted via Nego Metrics to over 1,200 vendors. Um, ultimately, 20 attended the pre-bid meeting on March 11th. Um, we had a we had a seven to eight week uh, solicitation period um, to give contractors sufficient time to review the contract documents and uh, fully digest the scope of the project. We ended up receiving bids. Uh, they were due last week on April 28th. Um, we received uh, bids. Uh, in person, actually, uh, at the DLD building, we conducted a bid opening um, out in the front parking lot, uh, practicing safe social distancing and implementing, you know, COVID safe protocols. So ultimately, uh, we had a good good turnout of the bids. We received six bids from prime contractors. Um, you can see them displayed there in, in Table A. Um, the lowest bidder, um, the lowest responsible responsive bidder uh, for the solicitation was J.R. Felance construction company. 
uh, with a low bid of twenty million nine hundred eighty-two thousand and thirty-seven dollars. So some of the benefits that West Basin stands to gain, West Basin and I should say uh, the communities which we serve stand to gain from this project. Um, well, first we'll be um, not only improving um, the reliability and operability of the of the plant, but we'll also be increasing the supply capacity of recycled water to one of West Basin's most critical industrial customers. Um, furthermore, commencing construction now uh, will make West Basin available um, to the grant funding opportunities uh, that Patrick described. Um, and then finally, um, the construction work um, is also going to be performed um, under um, a project labor agreement, which West Basin uh, has implemented for, I think we have six projects in total outlined under the PLA agreement. Um, which aims to boost the local economy um, and enhance local employment opportunities for both disadvantaged and local uh, construction workers. So with that, uh, I'd like to read the recommendation. Um, the recommendation is that the board authorize the general manager to enter into an agreement with J.R. Felon's construction company for the construction of the Juanita Melender Carson Regional Water Recycling Plant Phase Two expansion project in the amount of 20 million. $982,037.08 plus a 10% contingency for a total not to exceed contract amount of $23,080,240.79. And with that, I'll be happy to take any questions. Okay, well, thank you for a very nice, uh, very uh, strong uh, presentation there. Uh, the uh, directors, any questions? Yeah, how come the eight cents? Like the two bids had to end it in eight cents. That seems like some kind of a game they're playing. What is it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> they want to make sure they didn't tie. <laughs> yeah, I can provide you some background there, Director Deer. Uh, the eight cents is a is a carryover. You might recall uh, the special board meeting we held in January. Part of it was uh, West Basin has a, a pre procurement agreement for the uh, custom engineered microfiltration system and the equipment. So that eight cents is a is a carryover from the uh, contract that's going to be assigned to the general contractor. Okay, yep. thank you. Any other questions? You need a motion, Mr. Chair? Uh, yeah, I would entertain a motion. Yes. I'll, I'll move approval of the recommendation. I'll second it. And there's a second. I uh, now that it's been approved. I mean, excuse me, um, moved and and seconded. I just like to uh, say that um, I am very happy to see that uh, the PLA is in place. Uh, that is very good for us, for our um, our constituents. And the other thing is that um, this um, project is um, straight in alignment with our mission and. And so I am very happy that we're on the right track here with this. So with that, I will call for the uh, vote and we will have to do a roll call here. That's correct. Okay, am I calling the roll or are you? Uh, you you are, uh, President Williams. Okay, then I will do that. First, uh, Director Gray. Yes. Uh, Director Alvarez is not here. Uh, Director Houston. Director Houston. Okay, next is um, Director Deer. A uh, yes. And Director Williams, I'm a yes. So the motion carries. So we have. Uh, Three yes and uh, one um, absent and one I guess two absent I, I would guess. This is, can you can you hear me? Oh it, it, yes, Director Houston. Yeah, this is used. Hey, my internet went out right when the vote was starting, so um, I'm a I'm a yes. Okay, well thanks. So we have uh, it passes with four uh, yeses and one zero absent. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, then that takes us to the next item. Yes, uh, 
Uh, President Williams, so the next three items are all related to the item we just covered. So obviously for this project, um, as was shown in the first item, uh, will require a, a, a construction management services for the project, for a project of this size, of course. And uh, staff, again, put this, um, went out to bid. We didn't go with our on-call list straight up. Uh, staff put it on the street for bid, and we have a successful uh, bidder that Kevin, again, is going to uh, uh, present uh, this item for us. Yeah. All righty. Thanks, Patrick. Um, so in parallel to the construction services solicitation, uh, staff also advertised a solicitation for professional construction management services. Uh, to help oversee and manage the construction activities on site. So an RFP went out uh, for professional construction management services, uh, also on the NIGO metric system on February 23rd. Uh, this RFP went out to 1,069 vendors, uh, 35 of which attended the mandatory pre-proposal conference. Um, at the pre-proposal conference, we highlighted some of the key aspects of the project and the detailed scope of work um, for construction management services. Um, so following the pre-proposal conference, um, 26 uh, vendors confirmed their participation by downloading the documents. And ultimately we received six proposals from different construction management firms on March 23rd. For the solicitation, it was a formal solicitation. Um, so we had a, uh, a selection panel uh, that was comprised of two West Basin engineering staff and one member of the City of Torrance's engineering department. Um, so the selection panel together um, reviewed the written proposals uh, based on uh, the following categories. Uh, that these included uh, you know, project approach and methodology, qualifications and capabilities, uh, key personnel, uh, the overall construction management approach to the project, uh, completeness and quality of the proposal, as well as the, the cost and fee proposal. So following the review of the written proposals, uh, four firms were shortlisted and asked to participate in interviews. Uh, we had scored, uh, I think, up to 70 points for the written proposals and an additional 30 uh, for the interview portion. So you can see below there in, in table A is a, a summary of the four firms which were interviewed. Um, ultimately, you can see uh, Butier Engineering um, has been determined to, to be able to provide the, the best value to West Basin. Um, some of the ways that uh, Butier was able to distinguish themselves from the other firms were highlighting uh, recent successful project uh, experience with both uh, state revolving fund financing, which carries some uh, extra administrative requirements, um, also as part of uh, the State Water Resource Control Board funding. Um, there are requirements um, making the project subject to the American Iron and Steel Act. Um, so any iron or steel used on the project uh, must be sourced and made within the U.S. Um, and then furthermore, they've also uh, were able to highlight um, successful experience uh, on projects um, with project labor agreements. So a, a detailed um, breakdown of the scoring proposals um, is also attached to the memo um, if you'd like to see an expanded view. Um, but ultimately, uh, Butier Engineering uh, was determined by the selection panel to provide the, the best overall value to West Basin. Um, so with that, I will read the recommendation. Um, the recommendation is that the board authorize the general manager to enter into an agreement with Boutier Engineering uh, for professional construction management services on the JMM CRWRP phase two expansion project in the amount of $1,231,220 plus a 10% contingency for a total not to exceed contract amount of $1,354,342. I'd be happy to take any questions. Good, thank you for a very Good, thorough report. Uh, any questions? questions? Comments? I have, I just have one question. Yes, yeah, Director Gray? Yeah, what is SLBE points? I couldn't find it in the document. What is that? SLBE points? Yep, I can answer that, Director Gray. So SLBE points, uh, West Basin uh, Contracts Department administers a small and local business uh, enterprise program. So firms are available to receive additional points uh, based on whether they are a small or local business enterprise, as well as if they're sub -consultant. Okay, thank you. I have a question. Go ahead, Director Deere. 
yeah, the uh, HDR was quite a bit lower than the other firms. Uh, they've done a lot of work for us, so wh why was it so different this time? Sure. Yeah, I, I can provide some background on that, Director Deer. Um, ultimately, um, while while HDR's proposal uh, was a little bit lower in cost, um, HDR's proposal uh, stood to provide you know, total service hours of about uh, 5,200 man hours, um, contrary to Boutier, uh would provide 7,400 man hours. So we'd be getting a, a considerable considerable amount uh, more bang for your buck, if you will, uh, with uh, with Butier Engineering. I see. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Uh, no questions. This is Houston. I'll move the item. All right. You heard there's a motion to uh, by Director Houston. To approve. I'll second it. Second, seconded by Director Deer. <laughs> Any further questions? Hearing none, call for the vote. Okay, Director Gray. Yes. Uh, director, the Director Alvarez is not present. Uh, director Houston. Yes. Director Deer. Yes. Director Williams, I'm a yes. Thank you. So the motion carries. Next item. Okay, our next item is on uh, on your board packet page uh, 12, uh, item 5C, and this is for the on-call materials testing and specialty inspection services agreement for uh, amendment for the same project. And we have already referenced a few times here our project uh, labor agreement um which um we extended uh for five years back in july 2019 and this project you'll see the ones listed on we bump the screen down there kevin will cover these as well but the uh the gmm phase two expansion is one of the projects that are covered under this agreement and so this is to add uh, some additional funding for the pla group um kevin this is yours again please thanks patrick um so as, as mentioned, uh, West Basin holds a project labor agreement with the Los Angeles, uh, Orange County Building and Construction Trades and Councils and the Signatory Craft Councils and Unions. Um, so what this PLA does for us does for us is it establishes the terms and conditions of employment um, for all the craft workers, um, including field inspectors. So typically on West Basin projects, uh, field inspectors are part of the construction management team. Um, specific to the project labor agreement um, and how uh, the project labor agreement treats um, craft workers, including field inspectors, is that they all must pay um, union wage benefits, uh, fringe benefits, um, as well as um, employee, uh, employee, employee staff on a one-to-one on a -one basis. So um, you have to use one core worker uh, meaning if you're, if you're an independent firm that's not union signatory, you have to use one core worker uh, for every union worker that you use. So um, this process didn't align well with uh, West Basin's typical construction management practices from the beginning. So the terms of the PLA uh, provided uh, an exception to this in that West Basin would contract with a third party uh, local um, specialty inspection and materials testing firm that was already union signatory. Um, and it would also save West Basin costs, being that we wouldn't have to pay uh, these salaried inspectors um, their original hourly salary, salaried wage rate plus uh, the union wage wage benefits um, as well. Um, so the Smith Emery uh, agreement provides uh, staff the ability um, to um, perform on-call materials testing. These are you know, soil compaction tests, uh, concrete cylinder compression tests, rebar in inspection, welding inspection, uh, very specific as needed types of services uh, to fulfill uh, construction requirements and ensure, you know, quality control and quality assurance. Um, so three projects have already been completed um, as part of the project labor agreement. Those are the Gardena Lateral, um, the Hyperion Pump Station Improvements Project, and our Edward C. Little Visitor Center uh, renovation project. So looking at past expenditures, um, you know, the Gardena Lateral uh, consumed about $29,000 of uh, specialty inspection and uh, materials testing costs. Hyperion Pump Station 
about $72,000, um, and Everett's a little $94,000. Um, so all, all depending on the, the type of construction activities um, informs what kind of uh, materials testing and specialty inspection services are needed. So looking at past project expenditures and looking specifically at the scope of work for the Carson project, uh, staff has estimated that the specialty inspection and materials testing costs uh, will be roughly about $100,000. Um, so this agreement um, is uh, a currently held agreement and it has about $39,000 remaining on it. Uh, looking at the budget moving forward, uh, staff anticipates needing uh, an additional $60,000 to see the project through completion and provide uh, the necessary uh, materials inspection, materials testing and specialty inspection services uh, to ensure a high level of uh, quality control on the project. Um, I did want to highlight a few of the other advantages of, of a PLA project. Um, so first, I guess, utilizing Smith Emery will ensure that uh, we continue to have a direct contract with a, a testing firm and keep us in compliance with the PLA. But as mentioned, the PLA also aims to boost the local economy and provide um, unique opportunities uh, for construction for construction workers um, who reside within the, the West Basin service area. So specifically, uh, West Basin is going to require the contractor and all subcontract subcontractors to imply uh, local workers, um, that's uh, West Basin service area residents, um, will perform at least 30% of the craft worker hours on the project. And then furthermore, at-risk workers um, will perform 5% of the total craft worker hours. So for our PLA, um, we, were, we define a local resident, a tier one local resident as uh, a West Basin service area resident and an at-risk worker um, as a resident um, within 10 miles of the DLD building who meets two of the following criteria, uh, those being a gross household income of less than 50% of the LA County median, um, being homeless, being a welfare rep recipient, uh, being uh, having a history of involvement in the penal system, um, currently being unemployed um, and or being a single parent. So there's a, a considerable amount of uh, benefits that the community also stands to, stands to gain from this project. So with that, I'll, I'll read the recommendation. Uh, the recommendation is that the board authorize the general manager to amend agreement W2664 with Smith Emory Company for on-call materials testing and specialty inspection services in the amount of $60,000 for a new total not to exceed contract amount of $294,911. So moved, Mr. President. I move. I move the item. Okay, you've heard it's been moved by Director uh, Gray. Is there a second? I second it, Director Deer. Seconded by Director Deer. Um, and the uh, General Counsel, you are good with this? Uh, yes, Mr. President. Okay. So then I will, I am too, I think it's, it's great. And I will call for, um, call for the vote. Okay, Director Gray? Yes. Director Houston? Yes. Director Alvarez is not here. Uh, Director Deer? Yes. And Director Williams, I'm a, I'm a yes. Thank you, motion carries. So that takes us to the next item. Yes, uh, thank you, President Williams. Um, so yeah, this is the, uh, the fourth and final item, all again related to the, the same project, uh, item 5D, which you'll find on uh, back of page 15. And the, this pertains to um, the site over at the um, uh, Carson Regional Facility is about just under five acres. And uh, part of the construction of this um, project requires uh, using an easement on an adjacent property uh, with uh, owned by the Shell Oil Company. And this is a non, um, at, at no cost to the agency, but they're allowing us both for during construction to use it and also to run for one of our pipes or a couple of our pipes, which again, Kevin will explain more fully uh, through through uh, part of their property. but. Uh, uh, as for our general counsel's instruction, uh, it, even though there's no money involved, this requires a resolution from the board. Uh, so, Kevin, do you want to elaborate a little bit more? Sure, Patrick. 
Um, so as, as Patrick mentioned, the project scope includes the construction of a new potable water backup pipeline uh, for connections on site for the critical water supplies uh, of the Carson Regional Water Recycling Facility. So based on the layout and location of the planned potable water connections, uh, the most economical routing of the new potable water pipeline uh, is through uh, an adjacent parcel, uh, particularly it's through a, a, an access road. Um, it's a private access road that's, that's owned by the Shell Oil Company. Um, so we've worked with Shell um, to draft a non-exclusive uh, easement deed um, that's acceptable to both parties and, and we'll continue to work with them during construction. Um, I will reference uh, page 18 of the packet, which is a, a map of the, the easement itself, um, so we can better describe it. So the proposed pipeline easement um, is shown there. Um, essentially our, um, well, let me take a step back. Um, looking at this, this drawing in plan view, um, you are looking north. Um, so this is the, the north side of the, the JMM facility. Um, our current potable water connection is in the uh, northeast corner of the facility. Um, as mentioned, the most economical routing is, is through this private access road. So um, what it will do, uh, it'll provide a pipeline connection um, through the rear of our facility. Um, if you've ever been out there, the rear of the facility is, is rather undeveloped, um, but through this project, we'll be developing a, a stormwater capture system um, as well as an access road. And, and these pipeline, this pipeline will travel underneath that road um, and serve uh, potable water backup connections to our three on-site tanks. Um, furthermore, um, as the, the rear of the facility is expanded, um, we'll be adding some additional uh, chemical storage. Um, so this access road will allow chemical delivery trucks um, to access the rear, the rear of the facility and the expanded chemical storage area. Um, so not only will this easement allow for West Basin to, to access um, the pipeline for any maintenance needs, but it will allow our chemical delivery trucks to exit through the rear of the facility, um, travel down the private access road and, and exit back out onto Wilmington Avenue. So with that, uh, like to recommendation. Kevin, uh, Kevin uh, just before you read the recommendation, just to, so the board understands too, we talked a lot about potable backup. These, this, this of course, were uh, facilities to send recycled water to the Marathon Refinery, but we have to have a potable backup in the very unlikely event that there's an interruption supply so the refinery wouldn't uh, go offline. So that's the reason for this uh, uh, potable backup system. Thank you. Kevin, go ahead with the recommendation. Uh, just before you do that, I have a question. I don't have a page um, 18, uh, and if this is page 18, putting on my, my plan checking hat, uh, it's blank. This only thing on you is a north arrow. And, and then on your, this will not interfere with the with the approval of this, but the, um, Page 26, uh, the map that shows the uh, a point of bearing on the map, there, there shows no connection. So I, the map seems incomplete. So you might want to look at page 26 and page 18. I don't, I don't have them. Okay, my apologies for that, uh, President Williams. So we'll address both of those items and. Um, I always got to remember we have at least one engineer on the on the board, so those are good catches. And you have two, director. Um, yeah, but I, one of two, one just the one today. Um, okay, we got that. All right. Well, thank you. So uh, you've heard the recommendation. Uh, no, he, he hasn't read the recommendation yet, President Williams. Oh, that's right. Well, will you do that now, please? Kevin. Uh, the recommendation is that the board approve, adopt, and authorize the president to sign resolution number 05-21-1125, a resolution of the board of directors of the West Basin Municipal Water District granting authority to the general manager to accept property conveyed by a deed of easement from Shell Oil Company. I'd be happy to take any questions. Questions? I'll move approval. All right, we have a move of approval by director deer is there a second i'll second i'll second and it's been seconded by director 
Great. Any more questions? Hearing none, we'll call for the vote. Mm -hmm. We'll have to do a roll call. Director Gray? Yes. Director Alvarez is absent. Director Houston? Yes. Director Deer? Yes. And Director Williams, I'm a yes. So the motion carries four to zero. Next item, I think that was the last item. Yes, that's the uh, end of the um, the action calendar and an uh, information calendar, uh, President Williams, we do not have any anything on the information calendar. Nothing on the information calendar, closed session? Uh, no closed session today, Mr. Chair. No closed sessions, board, um, board of directors, comments, um, future agenda items? My comment, Director, uh, President, Mr. President. Yes. I just want to thank staff again this morning for their presentations. Thank you. Anything else? President Williams, if the, if the board of no further comments, I do have one. I have one. Go ahead. I'll let you make yours. Go ahead. Okay. Well, it's, uh, first of all, I, I want to really want to thank staff for the incredible work they've done uh, for the past uh, four or five months here to make this happen. And Barkhead showed tremendous leadership with his team and Kevin and, and Wendell and the, and the entire team to make this happen, working with uh, the state for the grant funding and uh, the refinery and um, all the parties and getting all the bids in and reviewing them and having the interviews. Also, the work went into this, into this effort. So thank you very much, Barkhead, Kevin, and the whole team uh, who contributed. Uh, the other thing is, um, I just want to give you a heads up that the board secretary will be reaching out to you today to uh, um, set up a special board meeting uh, for next Tuesday, right before ENO at 3.30. And the reason for that is it's related to the standby charge, um, which we have a date with the judge on the 14th. We have to get back to him and some new um, information has come to light that we need to the board to weigh in on. And uh, General Counsel O'Neill and I, um, are requesting that special board meeting. This, that's the purpose. It's time sensitive because we're back in front of Judge Burrow on the 14th and uh, we need a board decision ahead of that or at least to apprise the board of where we're at and what, what the more recent changes are. So you'll be hearing from Julie, uh, Frazier, Matthews today and hopefully we can get all the board members there right ahead of the uh, uh, already scheduled ENO committee meeting. Thank you, President Williams. Well, thank you. I, I just want to say that um, uh, what I've witnessed over the past, um, I guess, over months, many, many months through this pandemic, is that um, we are uh, engineering, well, our, our entire team that's managed and led by our general manager is truly a self-directed, empowered team because the work that you produce is outstanding. And I have not, again, heard any complaints or received any service requests regarding uh, claims of, on construction or uh, bid protests or um, any uh, um, complaints about, about the way we handle our, uh, re, uh, our interaction with our retailers, uh, water retailers. So I think um, you guys are doing a real great job and you, your, your leadership uh, from uh, the general manager, I think at this point in time is great. So thank you all. Thank you very much for those compliments. Thank you. Thank you, Director so, Williams for the kind words. You bet. Now, nothing else is before me, so I'm going to call this meeting adjourned. And our next meeting will be May 24th. Is that a regular board meeting? Is that That's correct? a regular board meeting, correct. Okay. All right, well, thank you. Thank you.